within a circle of scholars, there seems to be an almost inherent responsibility to tell history in its truth. The process isn't always easy. The stories aren't always pleasant. But that's what makes it an obligation. This is a film about history. A film about a marginalized people. About family. And the search for truth. If you don't identify as Native American or American Indian, your first impression may be marked with imagery such as this, tan skinned people riding horseback fighting cowboys in the Old West. These stereotypes have permeated our collective psyche for generations. The stereotypes have influenced many as to who Native Americans are, but also who they're not. False concepts of Native Americans have created certain preconceived notions, making a person's claim of connection with Native Americans or Native American identity to be loaded, overly fetishized, and novel. These connections and claims are often ridiculed or dismissed. The African American community in particular has had a long-standing tendency to be mentioned in these discussions, often citing family history as their connection with American Indian heritage. If you go to any family reunion in America, you're gonna run into people and you're gonna say, you know, how your hair gets so wavy? And they say, oh, I got some Indian up in my family, you know, or, you know, high cheekbones, or, you know, your skin looks a little red, you know, or, every black person in America believes that in their ancestry, there's, you know, Native American um, ancestors. And um, it's certainly a very complex and intertwined history. The first great patriot, Crispus Attucks, who was, uh, African and Native American. His, his, that was his ancestry. One of his parents was Native American. One of his parents was an African. And, you know, he was the first to give his life in the cause of liberty, in the, you know, in the Boston uh, Massacre. Or when we're talking about the Salem witch trials, the very first person that was accused was a woman who they thought at the time was of Native American ancestry. She was a witch. Her name was Tituba. But they come to find out that this is actually a woman who is of African descent from the West Indies. So it, it's, the, it's the way that that world of black and of brown or black and of Native American often overlap in very crucial parts of our history. I want everybody to be honest, just the African Americans in this room. How many of you are descended from a Native American? Just raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. There you go. Look at all them Native Americans. The first thing that comes to my mind is probably friends uh, telling me of their great-great-grandparents uh, saying that they're part Native American, um, part Cherokee, part uh, so on and so forth. I've been told, of course, like most black people, especially if you're in the South, um, that I have Native blood. My personal lineage, from what I know, suggests that my great-grandfather was, in fact, the son of a pure Cherokee. Well, I got news for you. None of y'all descended from Native America. <laughs> There's a lot of fakers out there, so so they immediately go, "All right, are you are you lying to me?" We all want to be a part of something um, apart from uh, a mass. Um, it, specification gives us it gives us fulfillment. Only five percent of the African American people, one out of twenty, have any significant Native American ancestry. But, but one out of 20. You shouldn't claim this for the aesthetic, like, yeah, see, I'm different. I'm not just black, too. And that's why I see a lot of people do. They can't all be a lie. It seems to play as though 
these people become a caricature of the idea of Native American. Uh, they make references to the, the hair or why they may look a certain way. The average African American and the average Native American never saw each other. I don't know about you all, but you can't sleep with, the internet can do a lot, but you can't sleep with somebody you can't see. <laughs> How many individuals really get an opportunity to trace that history? It's almost as difficult as tracing the true history of your African ancestry. America doesn't have a strict culture. Um, it doesn't have an identity. It's, it's made of mixed identities. We have to know who we are. At the end of the day, I need to know who I am. I too have had these stories of my family. What I was told of my family tree came from a handful of stories passed down over time. One of these stories was that the parents of my maternal grandfather were both of mixed heritage. Specifically, I've heard about both European and Native American lineage being within our family. I wanted to know if I was one of those misguided people attaching myself to a romanticized version of Native Americans due to someone else's need to hide the truth or to feel special. If I'm Indian, I'm Indian. If I'm not, you know, they say I'm Indian, I'm Indian. So. To my grandfather, these claims are mostly rumors too. Well, my father's name was Edward, same as mine, and my mother's name was Edna A. Pettigrew Stevens. It was five siblings all told. Beverly May Perry, she was the oldest. That's sister Irma, Wade Henry Hampton Stevens, and he was my oldest brother. My youngest brother was William Francis Stevens and myself. When I moved to Philadelphia, the depression was on. My father and mother came in for work. Our family has worked for what they got. And they didn't ask for it, they didn't beg for it, they worked for it. And that's when they got a job with the state senator in uh, Montgomery County. And we got a house in Montgomery County, Amber, Pennsylvania, to be exact. And that's when my father and mother worked until my mother passed away in 1944. My sisters both got married right after that. But my brothers and I stayed home with my father. We all finished school in Ambler. Living in the Northeast, my grandfather's ethnic background was not a constant topic of discussion. But where I grew up in high school, it was black and white went to school and we played football together, we played baseball together. They lived a couple of doors for you. There were Italians and Germans and Jewish. Nobody said anything about it. Nevertheless, claims of Native American ancestry existed within the family. I heard rumors, but I, you know, I wasn't specifically sure about that to begin with, you know. But I was told over years that we had some, you know, any real, so I never found out about it. I believe part of it because I had, when I was born, I had real curly hair and long hair. And my, I used to have hair almost halfway down my back because my sister used to flat my hair. And I had a ribbon, you know, like the Indians did, with ponytail, flats. That's where I was. And everybody thought I was Indian. But it was just rumors. Nobody could prove you know, I had no documentation or nothing like that. And my father never spoke about it, so. If you didn't have documentation, you wouldn't know. But it's a whole lot of missing links in our family that they could, could probably contribute to our future generation. Somewhere down the line, they start passing the word about where your grandfather was born, where your mother was born. I figured my father and uh, my mother, and it was, you know, it was something here. I don't know what it was. I can't prove it. Keeping a 